This show ain't garbage. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. FMU, you're on the air. What up, douche? It's Ploptron 5. I can't even do this. What? I can't, I can't, I can't even do it. Can't do what? Oh, the, the intro? The voice. Yeah, yeah, Darren. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess you heard what happened, right? At, at yesterday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, all, I heard something yeah. went down. Yeah. I, I've, uh, I've yet to get these specifics, but I guess it had something to do with kind of irking uh, old man Dalrymple. Yeah. Oh, my God, I'll tell you. I've seen him mad. Yeah. But th- this took the cake. I mean, uh-huh. I, he was even madder than the time he found me getting busy with Gwen, that hot female custodian we had mm-hmm. that one summer in 96. Mm-hmm. Remember that? God, that was a fun couple months. Uh-huh. God. Old man Dalrymple was undergoing those organ transplants, mm-hmm. and his cool nephew Rod was running the place. Mm-hmm. Remember we could drink at our desks, like just like in that show Madman? Well, I don't think it was exactly encouraged. I did it every day, didn't you? No. Oh, I guess that's why you seemed like a real drag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a real drag. Just me over over in my uh, office area trying to do work. Yeah, well, you know. Didn't it seem like everybody at Consolidated was in a rock band that summer? It's amazing. It's like, you and I had the burn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rick and Shipping had the Mutant Henchman. Yes. Bill and Research and Design had Dr. Dirty Leg. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you remember this, uh, Pedro and Hector from the cafeteria, mm-hmm. they had that band Los Muchachos. Really? Anthony. Los oh, yeah. Muchachos. I don't remember that. They were pretty good. Yeah, they kind of played that, that like flamingo guitar stuff, but mm-hmm. with like a rock beat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Craig from the Loading Dock was, was playing drums with them. Oh, and speaking of the loading dock, do you remember that, that guy, Gus, the old guy? Yes. He used to hose it down? Yeah. Even he had that weird rockabilly band that summer, the Hose Cats. That was a weird time. Yeah. I can still picture him, uh, you know, getting down with that stand-up bass like it was his teenage lover. What? No. What? Stop. Hey, question for you. What's that? Why hasn't there ever been another Consala stock? That was the best festival ever. I, you know, it just sometimes I, I guess it has to do with mixing the responsibility of work, right, and what could should kind of be hobby stuff well, on the side, and I think there's a, a definite lack of productivity that goes on when when stuff like that. Kind That's of. that said. Yeah. Didn't it feel amazing when we all jammed out at the end of the of the of the festival on Black Hole Sun? Look, I'm not saying it wasn't fun, Darren. Yeah. But it just I, I also remember we almost the whole thing almost went under. Right. Because no one was in the office. Oh man. For a huge well, we were all rehearsing. Well, we had to be good. Yeah. That'd be really good. And speaking of good, man, I, I know you always get down on me for this, but you got to break out that Steinberger bass again, man. You rip on that thing. I, I think I'm done. Why? Come on. You know, Darren, I just... You uh, look you know. great holding it. You know that. Well, it's a cool bass. It is a cool bass. Yeah. Hey, you know? But then, you know, but it's the kind of thing, honestly... Right. Everyone looks cool playing it. They sir, they do, especially the way you kind of thumb it, you know, when you mm. pop it on the, you know, if you're like you're mm. you're thumping it with your thumb. Yeah, well, I was kind of really good. Trying to do like a, I was kind of trying to be a little bit like Flea, right? Sure. And a little bit like Kurt Smith. Yeah. From uh, Tears for Fears. I like it. Yeah. I mean, you, if anyone can pull it off, it's you. Oh, thanks, Darren. Yeah. You know, we should get an apartment together again. That's not going to happen. Why? Come on. It was so much fun. No, that was a train wreck. No, well, all right. Well, hear me out. You keep your house with Jillian, Mm -hmm. but you crash at the apartment every now and then, you know, just like when you were dating Andrea McArdle back in the mid-90s. I still can't get over that. Do do you guys talk anymore? You know, 
it's it's a little still a little tough. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just the time. Sometimes time does not heal all wounds. Yeah. You think it will for the Kardashians? Heal all? Well, what do you mean? You know, time. I mean, it's it's very sensitive right now, but. I mean, that thing was cursed from before the minister even pronounced the man and wife, don't you think? You mean uh, Kim's marriage? Kim yeah, Kardashian's yeah. marriage? Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I didn't, you know. Well, here's what I heard. My brother, Dell, mm-hmm. he's friends with Troy Renfro, you know, from the Steelers. Have you ever had him on the show? He's a very interesting guy. Yes, I have. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Troy was at the wedding, and he swears he heard Chris Humphrey say, Duh, I do, during the vows. And it really ticked off Bruce Jenner. He didn't like that. No, he thought it, he thought it made it, it, it like a mockery of it. He wasn't even trying to be like, duh, it just came out, duh, I do. So he's just, he's just not a, a, a super smart guy. A- exactly. So Bruce Jenner goes up to him and he slaps him in the face mm-hmm. and he called him a simian simpleton. We should call our next band that. Simian simpleton. Yeah. Um, I guess simian's like ape-like or something, right? It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm know, actually working on songs if you ever want to jam. I, I think I might be done with. Uh, Ugh. All right. You know, it just it, everything has its time and 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 place. You know. I know. I know. Hey, well, get, getting back to yesterday, I got off track. Sorry. Yeah. Well, as you know, Halloween is my favorite holiday. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's it's not just because it's the anniversary of the first time I made love. What? Oh, I don't. Why do you? Why, I don't need to know these things. Dan. I don't know. I just think it's it's fun to talk about. Hey, speaking of making love, have you heard this song called Three Inches of Power? I have. I heard it on Sirius Radio the other day, and I really I enjoyed it. It was kind of like a Red Hot Chili Peppers meets Fishbone kind of kind of groove. Wow! L- I'd love for you to cue it up. I'm not. I'm look. I I heard it. Yeah. And it, there's a reason why I'm not playing it. I see. I see. Um, anyway, so I usually go all out for Halloween. Mm-hmm. And remember last year I went as the human centipede? Oh, remember how, how people were freaking out? Yeah, yeah. They asked it, me to leave Captain's Donuts. It was, it was, I mean, you realize that when you are out in public, Darren. Right, yeah. You know, we work together. Right. But you're, you're not at a, a private party or whatever where you can get away with those things but it's halloween i i I think anything should be able to go on halloween well you're you're in the minority on that one okay well yeah sure was because people were throwing up on each other i think one guy might have died it was gross it was scary yeah yeah hey speaking of captain's donuts have you tried their dinner buffet no, is it? It's it, it's good. So they have I, a different menu at night. They do. It's it's fancier. I I, I really recommend the uh, the steak clairs that they they provide. The what? Steak clair. It, it's it's an eclair shaped in the uh, the shape of a T-bone steak. It's very filling. So it's just donuts. Yeah. Though, but just shaped like. Yeah, and they they like put some kind of like it's almost like food paint or something to make it look brown. And and you're eating as you're eating this stuff. I ate a lot of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I I needed to top myself this year, right? Mm-hmm. So what I do, I I started off uh, Halloween the, the, the way I usually do. Mm-hmm. Um, Three a.m. I get up, I put on my costume, uh, and I go out and I do the window monster thing. And what is that again? The, I never told you about the the window monster. No. It's awesome. I, I go from house to house in, in, in my neighborhood, and I, I, I find out in advance, like, what, what window is, is the child's bedroom. And so I, I stand under the kid's bedroom window, and I start making these grunting sounds, then, then these moaning noises. Actually, I, I'm not making the noises. The, the, uh, the nightmare machine is making the noises. What is that? The nightmare machine? What, what is a nightmare machine? You never had a nightmare machine when you were a kid? No. No. Oh, Has- Hasbro made them. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, you would you would crank it up. Mm-hmm. It had like a little hand crank on it. And it, it was it ran on batteries, and then you'd put the, the the headphones on, and then you'd fall asleep, and like stuff would happen in the headphones during when you were sleeping, and in the morning you'd wake up and you'd compare um, who had the worst nightmare with your friends. That I never had one of those. I'm glad I didn't have one of those. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Well, anyway, you know, you, you unplug the, head, the headphones, and then the, the noises are, are audible to everybody. So that's, that's what I was using. And the, you know, the noises start, and the, and the kid wakes up, and he's, he's terrified, right? Mm-hmm. And then he goes to the window, and he looks out the window, yeah. and there's the window monster hanging from the sill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm dressed as this insane, like, Hellraiser uh, cannibal lector outfit. And you're you're doing this to who now? To a kid. To a kid. Child, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and the kid sees me and he gets freaked out. Uh huh. Yeah, and he goes screaming to his parents' room. Yeah. And when they come back with the kid, you know, he's in tears, they find that the window monster has soaked something scary and or profane on the window, but he's left a Mary Jane candy for him also. And how, why is this why Fun. are you doing this? Fun. For who? For me and for the kid. Oh, the kid has to love it. The, the kid will look back on it and say, you know, the Halloween monster is okay in my book. How can you be so sure? Oh, I just know it is. Uh, look, I, I, I think it sounds like it, it, it's not, it, you know, if a kid's going to a haunted house or something and you're right. scaring them and stuff. But they're not asking for this. Well... I, I think they'll appreciate it later. And um, so, I mean, you think just because it's Halloween that yeah, everyone is fair game? I think so. Don't you? Not in the slightest. Not Ugh. if they're in their house. Well, we, we'll agree to disagree on 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 this item. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On this item, okay. Yeah. So, what I did next was I, I changed out of my my morning costume, mm-hmm. and then I I, I, I got many, into my. How many people yeah? did you scare? Uh, ba 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 ba. Three a.m. I went to seven a.m. Oh, like 45 kids? 45 kids. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's... Okay. By the end, of course, I was trying to just, you know, hide from the police most of, most yeah. of the time. Okay. The woods, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you, at about 7 a.m., the sun's coming up. Yep. I I, uh, I go home and I change into my 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 day costume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what is your day costume? Willie from Lop Dance. What's that? Willie from Lop Dance. What is lop dance? You don't know about lop dance? No. It just came out Friday. What? It, what is it? It's the newest Trent L. Strauss film. Lop dance. Yeah, it's a play on lap dance. Okay. Yeah, Willie is the, this ugly bald uh, ape of a dweeb. He, he's he's like half ape and he's half dweeb. Yeah. And, and he actually he actually suffers from dweebism. Okay. It's an actual condition. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. It's in medical journals. It's what? It's in medical journals. In dweebism. Dweebism, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. I can nutshell the story for you, okay? Yeah, please. please. Yeah. Um, so, I like that a lozenge in my mouth. So <clears throat> this is a Trent L. Strauss movie. Yes, yes. Um, basically, Willie, um, he frequents a gentleman's nightclub called uh, Midnight Moanings. Uh-huh. And he's humiliated during the course of a lap dance one night. Okay. Yeah, he tries to have some mouth fun oh, with one of the girls. Stop it. And I... he ends up being banned from the place. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so um, Willie, you know, he's, he's ejected, so he, he's walking around out in the parking lot, and he's really angry, and he's cursing the skies. Why did this happen to me? Mm-hmm. And then he vows to get his revenge. Mm-hmm. And, Tom, you're never going to guess what happens next. He gets hit by lightning. He said he didn't know about it. Look, if you saw the movie, just I, tell me. No, don't make me look like a fool. No, I didn't see. I'm just, it's not that wild. It, I've seen other horror movies, as, and I've seen other Trent L. Strauss movies. Oh, yeah, I think the, I think the Tool Belt Killer has a, has a similar storyline where it's, uh, there's lightning involved, but there's also the uh, Viking burial ground with the horn hats. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, Willie is struck by lightning. Mm-hmm. And he turns into this monster. It's like a cross between uh, Leatherface and Pete Rose. Wow, that is yeah. kind of scary. Yeah. You know, I've heard a rumor mm-hmm. that Willie was based on you. Oh, that's that's nice. That's nice of you to say. That, that's what I've heard. I mean, it's, it's, oh. it sounds like it's a similar kind of look, you know, like oh. I described, <laughs> Simeon uh, hunched over, face caved in. What? Oh, that's, that's uh, as insulting as you can get. No, I'm just drawing parallels. Oh, I didn't. Okay. I didn't start this rumor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's really insulting what you just said. Oh well, I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, Willie goes on a lopping spree, mm-hmm. 
with all all the dancers at at the club, and also the the crab, the owner of Midnight Moanings, decrepit Jerome. Mm-hmm. That's actually his name. It's a decrepit bad old Jerome. old dude. Yeah, yeah. So he's going on a lopping spree. Yeah. And what yeah. does that mean? Well, you know, he he basically he lops off the heads of his enemies. Mm-hmm. And what he does then is he strings the heads onto this long rope, and he makes a big necklace out of it that he wears. Mm-hmm. And he actually makes it into the Guinness Book of World Records for owning the world's biggest necklace. Even though it's a necklace covered in, uh, that consists of human heads. Yeah, I guess they don't really care about that as long as it's big. Uh-huh. Yeah, he actually goes to jewelry shows, and when people look down at him or, or scoff at him, mm-hmm. he lops off their heads, too, and he adds them to the necklace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Strauss. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, Sir Strauss. Mm-hmm. He, he's been knighted in Malta. Uh, he's already really? working on on the follow up, Lop Dance Two. Uh huh. The Blood Goblins. Well, I'm I'm not. I'm probably not going to see the original. Oh. And I, I, you know, that it's not my thing, Darren. You know, if you're a sports fan, you, you owe it to yourself to see Lop Dance Two when it comes out. Why is that? Well, it's the reason that Tony Larusa won't be coming back to coach the Cardinals next year. Why, why is that? Well, he signed on to play Willie's dad in uh, Lop Dance Two. Really? Yeah, yeah. Tony Tony Larusa. Exactly. Yeah, the manager of the Cardinals. Yeah, he's yeah. going to now play. Wow. Okay. He's, t- he's taking it very seriously. He's actually taking lessons uh, from uh, Vin Diesel's cousin Vance Diesel. Okay, I didn't know Vin Diesel, I didn't know Vin Diesel's cousin taught acting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or so, did he teach Vin? No, I think Vin taught Vance. Oh okay, so yeah. Wow. Okay, so so he's got to be good, right? Oh yeah. I mean, if he's a if he's a, a, a like a a second generation. Can you imagine? Vin Diesel. Yeah, he's probably better than Sean uh, Pacino. Mm-hmm. Who's that? Sean Pacino. I don't know who that is. Yeah, it's Al, Al's younger. Uh, brother al pacino's brother what does he do he well he was in welcome back carter very uh-huh. short-lived tv show uh-huh welcome back yeah. cotter no carter oh, it, was, it was it was it was a cross between welcome back cotter and carter country i've never it, it, it lasted half an episode welcome back carter yeah uh-huh i think he's actually involved in some somehow in the production of the van morrison variety hour and a half sean pacino yes mm-hmm well, that, that that and that show is still on. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. I I can't warm up to that guy. Van Morrison. Yeah. Well, have you seen him do the soft shoe though? Yes. It doesn't seems, that warm your heart though? No, it seems like he doesn't want to be there at all. Oh, he doesn't. He hates it. Mm-hmm. He hates everybody involved in it. Yeah. He's like muttering. He is. Honestly, he's drunk. But he's always just like it's like and it's, look, it's one thing if you're a happy drunk. Right. But he's just like... He's mean. He's mean. He's a, it seems like a mean, sober yeah. person who gets meaner when he's drunk. He, yes. Yeah. It just he, it, he whips people with his saxophone strap, often. I, you know, I didn't know what that thing was. It's a saxophone yep. strap? Yep. It, it, it looks small, right? But, oh, my God, I've heard that it stings. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it, that... Well, I, I look, I'm glad that... Uh, Al Pacino's younger brother is finding work. Yes. Hey, did you notice how shaggy uh, Coach LaRusso's uh, hair was in the World Series there? Yes. Almost like a, like a power pop guy, right? Yeah, you know, like a, like an older power pop guy. That's because he is. Is what? He's a power pop guy. He actually plays bass uh, in a power pop band with Robbie Rist and two of the guys from the Pez band. <laughs> Tony LaRusso? He does, yeah. He yeah. plays with two guys from... He's a Steinberger. Wow! Yeah, I didn't know that at all. They're called the Papa Doms, you know, like the the crisp Indian cracker. Mm-hmm. And it's like a play on pop. Mm-hmm. They wanted to get pop in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, so. There, I didn't. So Tony La Russa has a whole baseball is just one aspect of this. Absolutely. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. A- anyway, I, I got off track again. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm dressed as Willie. Yeah. And I show up for work at Consolidated Cardboard. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I want to get the day started on a spooky note, you know, so I, but I look around and I'm the only one who took the time to dress up for, for Halloween. Mm-hmm. No, that, that isn't true. That isn't true. Um, Jimmy in accounting was dressed uh, as Obama. 
What? What's that? Jimmy? No, Jimmy. Jimmy he wasn't dressed. No, he was wearing a suit. That's that's how Jimmy from accounting looks. What does he normally wear? Like a, a suit? suit? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. That's embarrassing. Yeah. I didn't. No, that's it's, it's. I didn't mean what. Okay, what, whatever. It's a little. It's. I'm gonna say it's pretty offensive, but. Well, I'm sorry. Hey, speaking of politics, mm-hmm. are you following the, this this Herm Cain thing? Yes. Do you think he took a sheet meeting with those chicks? <laughs> I don't know if he took a sheet meeting. Yeah. Well, you read that that Henry Kissinger quote, right? No. What was that? Power is a ginormous aphrodisiac. I I I, I think you might be paraphrasing. I don't know. And it's true though. I I've experienced it uh, coaching my nephew Herbert's miniature tetherball team. You've experienced what power? Yeah, yeah, and w- what that does to uh, people. Uh, you know, some of those single mothers, they see a man in vintage terry cloth gym shorts, knee-high tube socks, and a muscle shirt, and they can't stop pawing themselves. Well, Darren, I don't know what to tell you with that. That's horrifying in a lot of, in so many different ways. Well, anyway, old man Dalrymple, he mm-hmm. comes in and he sees me in the in the Willie costume. Mm-hmm. And he starts giving me the old stink eye. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have you noticed that thing that he does when his eye actually emits a foul odor when he gets mad? It's an actual stink eye. It's it. Yeah, I I try to just keep my distance. Well, from how would you describe it? Because I would describe it as like a it's it's like a combination wet burlap mixed with sour white fudge Mm -hmm. in an old diaper. Yeah, to me, it's kind of like an abandoned hot dog cart. Oh, where the water's just been kind of left sitting for weeks? Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that's, that. it smells kind of like that. Yeah, someone burped into it? What? Yeah, I I don't know. Yeah. So, I go desk to desk trick-or-treating, mm-hmm. and nobody has any candy for me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all's fair, I get to do tricks then. And of course, well, most of those most of those tricks involve me uh, putting something that they had on their desk into my mouth, you know, <laughs> simulating mouth fun. That, stop it with that, please. Oh. I mean, first of all, you're going around an office; it's a place right. of work. Right. You're an adult. Right. And you're expecting everybody to have candy for you. Right. Well, it's Halloween. Yeah. Well, it's it's also an office, and you're uh, to boot. You are uh, now applying some rule, the trick or treat rule, to them, right? As if, as if that actually is like some legal precedent. That if you Tom, don't, what? The precedent is Barack Obama. Precedent. That's from Soul Man. I don't know what what from the movie Soul yes. Man. Yes, I thought you liked film. <laughs> I saw that movie once. No, it's it's where the guy who does the CNN voice he he uh, he asked um, C Everett what, C Everett Thomas what's his name the kid yeah yeah he uh, he says what's the precedent for this and he goes the precedent is Ronald Reagan because he doesn't know he doesn't know the answer he's stalling basically yeah yeah well that I that movie I never liked that movie it's a film please please show so, it some okay. respect okay. Pre- precedent. It's yeah. different than president. Okay. You're going around the office, a fully grown adult man, an employee of the office also. Yeah, correct, yeah. Trick or treating. Right. And you see nothing wrong with that. I'm trying to add some, some Halloween cheer to everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, and so so what if I simulate a little mouth fun while I'm doing it? Stop that. Okay. So, anyway, Dalrymple, he, he gets word of this, of, mm-hmm. of my death to death trick-or-treating, and uh, I know he's looking for me, so I hightail it out, out of there, and mm-hmm. I go straight over to uh, Newbridge Old Folks' home. Okay. Which I still can't believe is actually called Newbridge Old Folks' home. You'd, you'd think that that would just I figured that'd be, a be, nickname. be a red flag, right? Or that that would be just a nickname for it, but the place would have an actual respectable... It's the official name. Yeah. That, the... Newbridge Old Folks' home. Yeah. So you went over there? Yeah, I, I go there every couple of months to spread some sunshine to the shut-ins. Mm-hmm. Are they shut-ins or are they shut-outs? Because we're, we're, technically we're shutting them out of our lives in a way, right? 
But if it's about them, they are shut in to That's the true. place. That's true. They're kind of locked in there. Yeah. Yeah. Their cells. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they're so also like, old, but I mean. Yeah, well, yeah. So I think it'll be fun to go there for for Halloween and you know give give them some spooky fun. Old but people. I, Oh, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, want, I, don't like, I want to ease into it, though. I don't like where this is going at all. Well, hear me out. I don't, okay. want, I don't want to scare them right off the bat, so Good. I want to ease in. Okay. You know, because these people are ancient. So my plan is that I'm going to do this kind of Glenn or Glenda half costume. I've got, right. I've got normal Darren on one side, mm-hmm. and then I've got the other side, which is Willie, you know, the, the, the horrific uh, lopper. Okay. On the other side. So I position myself so that the, the old oldsters they they can only see the Darren half of me, mm-hmm. and then I you know I start hanging the banner and putting out the the pamphlets and stuff and uh, um, you know that's going well and no one really knows that it's going to be scary at that point. Mm-hmm. You know, and the banner and pamphlets. Yeah. Are. Oh, just things to pump consolidated cardboard. Yeah. You know, I, I I thought that would impress old man Dalrymple if he heard that I was, even though I wasn't at work, I was still doing consolidated work while I was off the off the clock there. Sure. You know, and the banner says, "You're welcome, O M Dalrymple." Mm-hmm. Yeah. O M Dalrymple. Yeah. Is it O what it, O old man? I yeah. I mean, that's actually on the banner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was just like a office handle for him. No, I think that's his... I just always assumed that was his name. Do you think he has, like, another name? Like, a first name? Yeah, I mean, I would... At some point, he had to be named something other than Old Man Dalrymple in but his I've life. I've never heard him called anything. I've mm-hmm. never... Like, I've been in the same room with him several times, and it's... His name never comes up, ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, you know, I... I've never given it that much thought, Darren, but it's now it now I kind of can't stop thinking about Something it. Something to think about, yeah. 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 Anyway, the Halloween show didn't go so well. What 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 went wrong? Well, I'm standing there, you know, as me, mm-hmm. the, the 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 Darren half in front mm-hmm. of all the all the old people and they're all in their wheelchairs and their cots or, or whatever it is they choose to be lying in. And then I, I flip this. Cho- sto- they, they choose to be lying. In. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they're resting. It's a rest uh-huh. home. Okay. It's a, re- it's a haven. Uh huh. Yeah. So I, I flip this switch, and the lights go out, and then all this smoke starts billowing in, and then all these crazy lights are flashing, and there, there's, you know, there's these Halloween sounds, and and then everyone starts screaming, all the old people, and then I, I, I flip the switch around, and I, and I flip myself around, and it's Willie. And and that just takes the horror level up like nine notches. Uh, so you've already set it up uh, horror wise with lights and yeah, flashing yeah, darkness, mm-hmm. scary smoke yeah. And um, Tom, th- um, the best way I can describe what happened is a mass heart attack. Yeah, that's it horrible. was just like everybody was having a heart attack that's... and it was it was sick. It is sick. So I, I did the only natural thing I could do. What's that? I bolted. You, you. So you run out. Yeah, I, I, I got in my car and then uh-huh. I, I drove back to uh, the double C, and I, I, I tore off my costume and, and I, I started trying to flush it down the toilet in the men's room. And as you, as you know, it flooded the men's room. Mm-hmm. And yeah. old man Dalrymple and his son, um, his son young man Dalrymple, mm-hmm. they found me in a stall perched on a toilet bowl. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you were never going to guess what I just saw. Oh, it's gone. What was it? It was a mouse in a cape. Uh-huh. Anyway, um, I was standing um, in a stall, in a bathroom stall, on on a, on you know on the toity bowl. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I was in big trouble. Thankfully, the Dalrymples were able to strike a deal with the old folks' home, where Consolidated is going to provide them with top-of-the-line cardboard coffins for next to nothing for the next 20 years. So there's no charges filed. So that's how they got out of this thing. Yes, exactly. Is there is uh, this is uh, something I don't even want to ask. Yeah. Do did anyone perish in this? Define perish. Did anyone ex- lose their lives? Yes. Ex- ex- okay. Well, yeah. that's horrible. Well, 
They're in heaven now. I'm in hell, though, because I got fired. They're, they're in heaven now is not an excuse. Well, if it makes them feel better, I, I'm, I'm fired. I have no job now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you, if you heard about it, but old man Dalrymple took me by the ear, and he, he led me to my desk by my ear. Mm-hmm. And he, made me, he made me clear clear out my desk. And then all the while, he's still holding my ear. Mm-hmm. And then he led me down four flights of stairs by my ear. And all the while, I'm... All I've got on are those cool red briefs that Sheila said she likes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Someone took pictures of it, and they posted it on that, that website, patheticsimps.net. Patheticsimps.net. I have to yeah. see this. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Well, you're going to do it now. Oh. Oh, Wow. Oh, I haven't looked at it yet. This is not good. Are there comments? I'm not even. I'm not even gonna. Yeah, I'm not even gonna get into that with you. Can I ask a question? Yeah. If and when I look at this picture, am I going to be embarrassed by what's going on down there? You're going to be embarrassed every which way. Oh no! Up, down, everything. I mean, does it look like a miniature Whipple or what? It's, it's uh, I, it, oh. you're in you're in bad shape with this. Oh boy. Okay. Well, um, I guess a positive is that I'm on the fast track to be a pathetic simp of the year, from what I've been told. From the uh, from the website. Yeah. Did you get money for that or something? I think it's more of like a recognition thing. I don't know if you get a sash or not. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, that. Hey. Yeah, go ahead. So I, I, I need a favor from you. What do you. What's the favor? Well, to counteract that, I need to film you doing all the stuff that they think I did. I, I, I'm confu- a little confused about this. Yeah. I will film you, you know, at the old folks' home do, doing all the stuff that they, that they said I did. Mm-hmm. And then also flooding the, the men's room and all that stuff. So that way... You know, somehow, mysteriously, they, they get a, a, a disc of, of, of this footage of you doing it. They fire you, I get my job back, and y- you go on to do something else, whatever. Uh, That's only you, fair, I'm, right? I'm kind of confused by this. It's, it sounds like you're expecting me to take the, take the heat for everything you did. Well, why not? I mean, you do owe me. I, I, owe, I owe you nothing. Yes, you do. What, what do I owe you, Darren? I lent you the money for that base. That was my money. You paid me back. Why are you always nitpicking everything? I really don't like it. It's very distasteful. Well, you're lording it over me like I lent, like you lent me the money. It was you paying me back. Well, will you please do it? No. Please. I'm um, no. Ugh. Well, you know what. What? I gotta look. I gotta look at this a different way. This whole thing might just be a blessing in these guys. What's that? I said this might be a blessing in these guys. I don't. I, it, a, a blessing in disguise. What's that? That's what I think you're trying to say. Oh. A, I thought it was a blessing in these guys. No. Oh. Disguise. Hmm. I guess they both make sense. Um, not, I mean, le- maybe yours less so. I don't know. Anyway, this is going to free me up to devote more time to my column. You know, like, i got to look at it that way. Mm-hmm. What, what column are you talking about? I didn't tell you about this? No. I have started to write for popcultureapocalypse.com. I've seen that site. Yeah. It's that website where they tell you what's wrong with everything. I'm not crazy about it. Why not? It's just, it's, I mean, it's just what you just said. They tell you what's wrong with everything. Doesn't seem yeah, like they oh, I like, mean, someone has to. Well, it doesn't seem like they like anything there. Uh, I don't know. Who cares? I, I'm actually writing for the, uh, the TV Sucks section. Okay. okay. Yeah. They've started me off reviewing old episodes of How I Met Your Mother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very satisfying, Tom. To what? Review episodes of a TV show? Yeah, from the first season. I really love doing it. It's really creative for me. Okay. I mean, weren't you, like, working on a novel at one point or something? Yeah, 
Yeah, I was. Yeah. And a screenplay. I was. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and also a, a, a play too. And a play. Yeah. 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 And you wouldn't rather be doing one of those three things. You wouldn't rather be doing one of these things," said Sharpling, whining in a voice best described as Dane Edna on Adderall. You know, what are you doing? Oh, um, I, I'm actually uh, reviewing this call for the uh, phone fail section. For the what? Phone fails. Phone fails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're reviewing what? This phone call. This phone call. Yeah. yeah. So you, there's a, and what does the phone fail section consist of? Just um, reviews of phone calls. This is probably going to be the first one, I think. I, I, I've, I've been told in, in, uh, in the next uh, issue. Sharpling is troubling, troublingly feminine self-absorption personified. Well, I don't know what your... Ploppleton sounded more masculine than ever. One wonders how Deplop, who's recently been romantically linked to Newbridge Mexican's cheerleader Darlene Larson, has time to write, since he's no doubt busy tapping that. Darren? Ta- tapping that, a term Ploppleton was first to coin in spite of what you've read in history books. What was that? Well, first, first of all, I just want to say how awful the the fact that the that our soccer team, you know, the, for Newbridge's semi indoor league, right, is called the Newbridge Mexicans. I think it's majestic. I think it's offensive. Oh, well, that's your take, I guess. I don't mm-hmm. know. You know, and on but secondly, I just want to ask you: you you're writing all this stuff about me and about yourself or you're writing right. it as Darren Ploppleton, you know, about you're writing about Darren Ploppleton. Are you writing this as Darren Ploppleton? Like oh, are you God, write, no. you so you're not writing this under your own name. What are you nuts? No. Okay. I'm not going to put myself out there like that. Are you kidding? Mhm. Yeah. I do it under a different name. Mhm. Yeah. What what name's that? Colonel Clink's Dink? Why? So that's the name that you're writing. Okay. It is, yeah. 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 Well, you know, I I disagree with this completely. And, you know, I know I said it earlier, but I'm just going to hit the point. You know, you you are somebody who I've played in bands with. Right. And I know you've got a certain amount of talent. You know, so I just don't know why you're not kind of taking this energy Mm -hmm. that you're putting into these phone call reviews and and reviewing episodes of how i met your mother right why you're not putting that energy into something original you know rather than just writing about what other people are creating because i don't want to because you don't want to oh he just hung up wow okay it's odd. Because I don't want to. Whew. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not a whole lot. Who's this? This is Rudy G. in Dayton, Ohio. First time caller, first time listener, referred by Ryan Gelatin, one of your longtime listeners. All right. What's up, Rudy? Not much. I was appreci- appreciating your show, and then I just listened to that long spiel, and I feel like I want to jump off a bridge. Can you help me? Uh, yeah. Why don't you go drop dead? And uh, no. please call, please stand the line while you do it. I'm just. Unbelievable. 